All right, guys, so in today's video, I wanna go ahead and show you what a, uh, I guess a set or a pair, or a Hoosier 28 inch tall tire looks like when mounted on a 17 inch rim for a Ram 1500. So I have those mounted, I got them mounted yesterday. Here's the video footage of them getting mounted. All right, we got the tires unloaded. Get the Hoosiers mounted. like that they honestly took about five minutes i got them loaded up in the back of the trunk i was gonna say truck but not a truck we're in the jetta and um i'll show you guys what they look like fully mounted once i get them out um from from the car because they're jamming in here right now so i'll show you guys what they look like mounted on 17 inch wheels they're a lot smaller than the uh factory. okay so those guys are super quick uh like i said they had us in and out of there and less than probably 10 minutes which was awesome uh, we didn't go ahead and put any weights on them because really we're not going to be doing anything too high speed and uh, they're in the rear a lot of guys don't end up putting any uh, weights or balancing stuff on them so didn't bother in that regard but let me show you so this is what they look like they're mounted now um, as far as bulge goes uh, I heard some people asking whether the rim would be wide enough. So hopefully this answers questions of that for you guys. Um, these are 9 inch rims, it's 10 inch wide tire, so there really isn't that much difference. It's not like sketchy or anything of that nature. But that's kind of the beef we got there. They look normal in a sense when you're just looking at them, but these things are so... Um, they right now have about 30 PSI in them, which we wouldn't be running down the strip. We'd probably take them down around 20 or so. But they're like very gummy, as you would expect. Like you can sit there and make a mark in the rubber with your nail. Again, we didn't put any uh, weights on them, but they're mounted. Got both of them right there. <clears throat> um, let's roll these over here. You guys can see what it looks like against a regular tire. So this would be. There's the difference right there. So, it is quite a bit shorter. Um, you know, a 31 inch tire, I think is what these are, versus a 28 inch tire. So it's a few inch difference. Um, these 17s aren't 33s, because they're the 20s. So they should be a 31 inch tall, tall tire. And that's the difference. So you're lacking a few inches, but it should look pretty cool and um, I can get this lean up here without falling over one thing I'm noticing is they don't really sit flat at least with 30 pounds in them so I do have the 24s on the rear and you guys can probably see the rake that we got going on here so I think what will happen is my truck will probably be almost level with those 28s on there so once we can mount them I don't think there's really a point in mounting them right now but when we get to the track and we mount them, the truck should sit pretty well level. Right now it's just got the factory kind of rake on it, but with those shorter tires in the back, it should be pretty well level. Um, I was ready to go, everything was ready. I took the tailgate off. I took off those uh, frame weights. Not that that's a huge savings, but it is kind of a small savings. So if you guys can see them right there. Frame weights were removed from either side, so there's one that mounts right there on this mounting bracket that you guys can probably see right there, and then on the same on the other side. And they come off pretty easy. This is this ugly thing here, and it's kind of like a, almost like an engine mount. It's got a rubber mount in the center, and then just the two bolts with those two nuts. So you just remove the two nuts. I would say they probably weigh, I guess I could put them on a scale for you guys, but they probably weigh a good 
15, 20 pounds each. So it's like 40 pounds, I would think, if you remove both of them. Tailgate's off, and I actually came out with a, uh, I'm gonna make a video on it, but you guys know that my shoulder's kind of not in the best shape. But I actually figured out a way to take this off by yourself fairly easily without damaging anything, which is pretty cool, because uh, when I first took it off, I definitely needed a hand, and it was pretty awkward, but now I figured out how to get this off and probably on without wrecking anything, and um, you can do it yourself. So I'm gonna show you guys that in a separate video. Um, what else can I tell you? As far as the truck, uh, I still left the interior. I did switch the blow off valve, so here is the tile one. Reason being is because there's different springs that you can get in here. It's not as simple as just hooking up the vacuum line, but there's different springs that you can put um, in these for uh, different boost levels to uh, maintain that. So what happens is if you have too soft of a spring, you can only assume what will happen is this valve will open. If the spring that's pushing down and counteracting on this valve is too soft, it will end up actually cracking open while you're boosting and leaking boost out, losing boost pressure. Cause I'm pretty sure I was losing a bit of boost with this. So I'd have to put in a stiffer spring, but just haven't gotten around to it. And one of my pet peeves with that thing actually is, um, you hear it audibly. I mentioned this in another video, but while you're just driving, cruising, just trying to mind your own business, this thing is cracked open. And because it's a loud blow off valve, it is just like hissing super loud, like very loud, almost noisy, almost annoying. And you're not even trying to do anything. And that thing's just going, Psh! it sounds like you have like a boost leak just driving down the street. So right now the stock pro charger one is on there. I at least know that one will hold boost. Um, and I haven't done anything with interior. Um, I'm going to try and get out, get some testing on those tires at least because I want to test them out before we actually do some runs, but I haven't taken out any interior. I was thinking once we actually go for like a good, good quarter mile run, I'm going to take out this front seat, passenger seat. I'll take out the rear seats and maybe just like these kind of storage, uh, the flat fold out trays. I'll take those as well and the seat backs as well. So I think we should be able to shed a few hundred pounds right there and that's going to be as fast as we can get it. I am on the lookout for uh, some other wheels because one of the considerations to uh, think about is these wheels, if I go to the track, I'm going to drive over the way you see it, right? So I would drive over to the track with the stock 17s on the front, these on the back because those are not street legal and I don't want to burn them up just getting to the track. So these would go in the truck, we would get to the track, remove these 24s, put those uh, Hoosiers on the truck and um, these would be left sitting in the parking lot. And that's where I'm a little bit nervous is leaving these sitting in the parking lot while I go do a run. I'm a little bit nervous that I'm, they might not be there when I get back. So <laughs> that's one of the considerations. I do have a cable lock, but still like, if I cable lock these two together along with my floor jack and stuff, cause I have to switch them. Um, it might just be like a starter kit for somebody <laughs> for their truck. So they would take both wheels and the jack. So. Um, I'm going to be on the lookout for just another cheap set of two wheels. I was considering buying another spare tire and just putting it on the air side because I did take my spare out, but um, spares seem to be a little, a little bit uh, pricey. Some people want like a hundred bucks just for a spare, which um, uh, a used set of like 20 inch wheels is only like 200. So it doesn't really make sense for me to spend a hundred on a spare. Um, but that's pretty much where we're at right now. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much gonna do it for today's video. Um, truck is, you know, much closer to being able to go to the track. Problem is, is that event ended up getting canceled. So I am going to try to make it to an eighth mile just to do some testing and uh, try to get those uh, tires figured out as far as what PSI we're gonna run and, and all that good stuff. But I wanna kinda ask you guys another question is, I think I'm starting to, feels pretty strongly about this uh, scenario is obviously I'm pretty committed to getting this truck to go fast but what I think I'm gonna end up doing is seeing how fast we can get it I'll probably do like maybe a couple uh, quarter mile times set a good time I think we'll probably set one of the records for uh, a pro charge like a stock pro charger kit stock boosts um, with a full-size truck and I think at that point I might end up pulling the money out of that truck so we can start another project and keep the channel interesting. So that's kind of my my gut feeling. Rather than going absolutely crazy on the truck, I think we'll take it to you know stock engine, uh, pro charger kit, 
see how fast that thing is and then put it mostly back to stock, pull the money out of it, like sell all the different parts. That way we can start another project and keep the channel interesting because I do actually want and need a truck that actually works as a truck. If I start going absolutely crazy and dropping another motor in here and having it you know, very finicky and tuning and all that stuff and I can't really take it on a long trip, I think the actual essence of this truck is gonna be a little bit compromised. So that's my gut feeling. Let me know what you guys think. And it's not to say that we're just gonna you know, put the truck back to stock and that's the end of the channel. The idea is to sell off recoup the money from the parts that we put on the truck and then uh, start another project whether it's you know another <coughs> truck or a cool car something of that nature but something to keep it interesting but if we keep sinking money into the truck that's all we can really do and i think um, trying to make the truck super fast is kind of going against what the actual idea of a truck is so i know it's cool to like you know be the underdog and try to see how fast you can make the truck which is kind of what we're doing but I think there's a certain point or a certain line where you can get carried away. And I think we're right on that edge where if we start you know, throwing a cam in it, and I'm not discrediting anybody that has, uh, has put a cam in one of these trucks or taken it to that level, but for myself, I feel like if I start camming the truck and you know, taking apart the engine and building the engine and doing all that stuff, I think the, uh, the you know, concept of having a truck and a nice comfortable truck with a bunch of features that you can take on a road trip is a little bit lost. So that's my personal opinion, but I want to hear your guys' take on it. So drop me a comment in the comments below and let me know what your take is on that whole scenario because I do, uh, this is something that I've constantly been thinking about because if the more money we spend on the truck, I can't do another project. I don't think I'm going to sell this at this point, but I don't have a problem with shuffling it to the side and putting another project vehicle in its place. So I can, I still have a three car garage. I can shove it right here, start a new project there and we can have some fun, but Funds are limited and I mean, there's all sorts of things. There's, you can get into, and I'll do a separate video on this, but you can get like some used um, Corvettes or different cars and uh, they're only like, you know, between five and $10,000 and then we can turn that into a crazy race car and just take it in that direction. But if I don't have a truck to tow a race car or a race vehicle with to the track, then it's almost like my truck made for towing will turn into a race vehicle and then I don't have anything to tow it to the track with. Because even right now, like having to drive it over to the racetrack and then switch the tires and all that stuff, like you saw Jay Green, he ended up towing his truck to the track, right, with a different truck. And that truck was supposed to be his family truck that he wasn't gonna touch. So that's kind of the same concept here. It's like, you know, this truck's supposed to be in a tow vehicle and it has tow package and everything on it, but if I turn into a race vehicle, then what do I tow with and I have to get a second truck? It's just like, Kind of a little bit mixed up. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Comments below. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Take care.